All right, our last section of notes for the year. Wow, okay. So this is our, we're on ecology still. This is our last part of ecology. We're gonna talk about biodiversity, how it's becoming uh, less abundant and talk about our human population more specifically. So those are the topics we're gonna to talk about today. The importance of biodiversity, the loss of it, human population growth, our ecological footprint, and climate change. So before we go into what biodiversity is, I want you to think back to our evolution unit of natural selection. Okay, We had this scenario where what would happen to a species that had no diversity? They were all identical. So every single species, every single individual in that species was identical. Yeah, that could be a good thing sometimes, but if something were to happen to that environment in a negative way, the entire species would be gone and it wouldn't survive, right? That's why in order for evolution to happen, we need some variants. We need species to have variety in them or else they're going to all kind of fall under the same boat, whether something good or bad happens. So we need that variety, right? Same thing with an ecosystem. The more diverse an ecosystem is, the better chance of survival it has when the environment changes. The environment is always going to change. And whether some new species comes along, the weather, whatever it is, the environment's going to change even through season cycles, right? And the more diverse an ecosystem is, that means that there's more likely a chance for most of the organisms to survive. So yeah, we might lose a couple organisms here and there, but if it's really diverse, we'll still have a good variety there helping it survive. So an ecosystem is an interconnected web of abiotic and biotic things. So remember earlier in this unit, we talked about food chains and food webs, right? They're interconnected. Abiotic meaning non-living, biotic meaning living. So for example, the quality of water, air, rocks, temperature, autotrophs, heterotrophs, decomposers, they all affect one another. This is interconnected. So if one of these things is affected, it's going to affect other living and non-living things in that ecosystem. Biodiversity enables the ecosystem to work properly and stay intact. So why do we need a working ecosystem? Why do we need our ecosystem to work? What does it benefit for us? Well, it recycles all of our compounds. Remember our biogeochemical cycles? It recycles the water we use, the carbon, the nitrogen in the atmosphere. Um, most of us don't realize this, but a lot of our plants, they filter water. So our water quality is affected by how much vegetation is out there. Obviously, our ecosystem gives us food and resources. It gives us energy resources, space and um, objects that help us create energy. It even gives us resources to produce our clothes and fabrics. So our lives, they depend on a working ecosystem, right? If we don't have a working ecosystem, we're losing a lot of things. And what I need you guys to know is that biodiversity, the more diverse, the more uh, species there are in an ecosystem, it's going to allow it to work better, okay? So we just talked about why biodiversity is really important, but unfortunately we have to talk about how we're losing this biodiversity in the recent years. So ecosystems are dying because they're becoming less diverse. Remember, if one organism is affected, it's going to affect the others and it's a chain reaction. So it's going to eventually lead to an ecosystem dying if it gets that severe. And why is this happening? It's happening because of humans, the actions that humans are making. It's really affecting the biodiversity of our ecosystems. So let's talk about a couple of ways that humans are negatively affecting this. One is invasive species. So the word invasive, when you see the word invasive, you think it doesn't belong there, right? And that's exactly it. 
like somebody invading your privacy. So an invasive species is an organism that are not native. They don't originate to that particular area. They don't originally belong there. They're not all harmful, but if they are, it can greatly damage an ecosystem. Um, they spread disease. So example, the Asian chestnut blight fungus, so a type of fungus, was introduced to an area where it was not originally from, and that eliminated the chestnut trees from the entire eastern U.S., which scaled down the whole forest ecosystem. Imagine a forest where the majority of the tree species suddenly died, right? That would affect a lot of different species in that ecosystem. How else do invasive species uh, affect the ecosystem? If they're predators. Imagine if a new predator was suddenly introduced to an ecosystem. That new predator could severely reduce the native species through competition and through predation. So how does this happen? So some species can get to where they don't belong naturally, whether it's through wind or they're carried by another animal. But most of the invasive species are actually transported through trade and travel through humans. Um, this is another example. So not only does an invasive, invasive species hurt ecosystems, they cost homeowners home and countries a lot of money. This is a very common um, example of an invasive species, the emerald ash borer. This is a beetle that um, originally is from Asia and it came into America. So why is this little guy so bad? Well, it's an ash borer, so ash trees. The larva eats the inside of these trees. This is the larva. You can see these little like tunnels, right? Through um, the ash tree that's from the larva eating and making its way through. Well, it's creating all these little holes and divots inside of the trunk of the tree and nutrients aren't able to get to the top. So what ends up happening is all of these ash trees, as soon as they get infected uh, with these emerald ash borers, they start to die. And so the governments have been treating these trees, replacing these trees, marking these trees, and it's cost us $12.7 billion so far. So not only is it hurting the ecosystem, but these invasive species are costing us money. Another way that humans are kind of causing the loss of biodiversity is deforestation and overharvesting. So deforestation, exactly as it sounds, it's the permanent removal of tree. They're getting rid of these forests. Um, why are they doing this? They're clearing land for agriculture, for grazing for cattle or other livestock. They're using the timber for fuel or manufacturing. A great component of why they're doing it are to create palm oil uh, plantations. Almost half of all of our supermodic products have palm oil in it. So what they're doing is they're tearing down these forests and just creating like a space where they can grow palm oil. And that type of manufacturing is a reason why deforestation is so big. Another example of loss of biodiversity is over harvesting. This is where they're collecting or hunting too much of a species. Why? They're using them for sport, for food, trade, fur, antlers, skin, material to produce items. Another one is habitat fragmentation. So we know a habitat is a space where an organism lives. Fragmentation, think of fragments, so separate pieces. So they're creating separate pieces of this habitat. It's creating a barrier form that prevents an organism from accessing its entire home range. Caused by building roadways or the harvesting of forests. So this obviously you guys see all the time. We have a roadway that splits this habitat right into two sections, and it's going to affect the species that are living there. Um, this picture is a cool picture because it gives us a demonstration. Certain animals can live on the edge of habitats. Certain animals can live on the 
uh, the middle or the inside of the habitats. So when you create these fragments, you're creating more edge space and less of this middle space for those animals to survive in. Overpasses and corridors are ways to help with this issue. So this picture over here, I see this overpass. This is a solution to the problem. It allows organisms over here to get to the other side without um, having the danger of these roadways. So those are all ways that humans have kind of affected biodiversity. Let's talk about the human population growth and why essentially this problem is getting bigger and bigger. So no species has altered the earth as much as humans have. Because humans are complex and do all use, I should say, do not use the same resources, I'll fix that, in the same way, finding an exact number of a carrying capacity is difficult. So humans are very different. We don't live all the same. So figuring out the exact number of resources that we need, it varies from country to country, right? So our carrying capacity is not uh, a for sure number at this point. But it's important to realize that Earth cannot hold an infinite number of people, right? It can't happen. The planet is not getting any bigger. And if our population keeps growing, we will eventually reach a number that this planet cannot support. So remember our growth patterns, we had exponential growth and we had logistic growth where it evens out. The human population is definitely showing an exponential growth. This chart right here shows it very clearly, right? In the past um, recent years, it's really shot up crazy. So that's exponential. When I created this slide on April 30th, five o'clock, this many people were living in the world. So I just wanted to kind of click on this. Today is May 3rd right now, so a few days later. I wanted to click on this to show you how much that has changed in just a couple days. All right, so right now, again, this is May 3rd, about 11 in the morning. The U.S. population is right here. World population is right over here. Notice that number is continuously going up, right? It's not slowing down at all. So let's look at our hundreds. Right now, it's 647 million. So it went up a million people in just a few days, right? That's a big significant, it's growing pretty fast. Okay, let's talk about an ecological footprint. How much land is needed to support, sustain the resources used? <clears throat> so this is essentially how much land do we need to survive? Resources, I mean, energy, food, land, areas to absorb waste, etc. You can compare this number to the land available, which is a bio capacity, in order to determine if a group is overusing their resources. So we're comparing um, the resources that we're using to the resources that are actually available to us. So countries with more money and a higher population will typically have a higher ecological footprint. They'll use more resources and energy. And that makes sense. Humans are using more resources than our planet provides. So an average of all the countries here, we're definitely using more resources than our planet can provide us. Now note, our planet replenishes those, but not as quickly as we're using them. And this little figure shows us what countries are using more than what's available to them in red. And green is showing us countries that are using actually a good amount less that's actually available to them. So another way to think about this, think about it in a form of money. So say we have a yearly budget, how much money we can spend in a year, right? We happen to be using all of our money, let's say by August. So for the rest of the year, we have to go into debt and borrow money that isn't available to us. We're essentially biting off more than we can chew. This figure shows